What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, I say it over and over again. I love GPI boards for the Flipper Zero. I don't know. There's just something about taking the Flipper Zero and adding even more functionality to it. It's just the coolest thing ever. Now, I've shown off what seemed like countless boards from people like AWOC, Rabbit Labs, Just Call Me Coco, and more. Now, making Flipper Zero GPIO boards isn't easy, so anytime I want to showcase a board by a new creator, I really want to make sure it's something I can stand behind. So, a new board maker's come along the scene, and they're actually making some pretty interesting stuff stuff so I figured what better time than now than check out what they have to offer so today we're gonna to be taking a look at the flipper hub store and seeing how their boards compare to boards from other creators starting an online store to feature flipper zero GPIO boards is a huge endeavor so of course if I see a new creator and I think you're doing a really good job I figure there's really no better way to get back to the community than to feature them so let's sit back and relax and nerd over some tech let's go So first off, a huge shout out to Billy Green. He's the creator of Flipper Hub. He's been doing a really great job making boards and serving a very underserved market of the Flipper Zero community. So Flipper Hub is based out of Berlin, Germany, and the European market tends to kind of get hosed because a lot of the board manufacturers and board creators are based out of the United States, which means you've got a huge duty and a bunch of taxes to pay, plus shipping. So actually having somebody in Europe distributing to Europe makes things a lot quicker, easy, and less expensive for people. So let's hop on down to the desktop and take a look at what he's got available in the store. And then we'll get into some of the stuff that I personally own. All right, so here we are down at flipper-hub.de. So first off, good on Billy for hosting your own store. There are a lot of websites like Etsy that are pulling things like Flipper Zero add-on boards, Ponagachis, all sorts of stuff that, in my opinion, really shouldn't get pulled off those stores. So if you can drive enough traffic to your own web store, you're in way better shape than you something like Tindy or Etsy or any of those middlemen. Also keep in mind, since you're not paying somebody like Etsy or Tindy, like the fees that you have to pay them, it means you can potentially offer your customers a lower price. All right, so the first thing on the website I actually wanna talk about is this Pocket Marauder right here. So Pocket Marauder is based off of a CYD or a cheap yellow display. So yeah, it's a CYD. He's got a 3D printed case for it and it's flashed with Marauder already. One of the things I like about that is the fact that it's going at about $40 USD, which I personally believe is pretty reasonable. Now you see the CYD itself runs for about seven or $8 on AliExpress. Then he's got to print the case for it, flash it, figure out the logistics to get it sent out to you. So for $40 USD, I personally believe that's pretty fair. I see these things going for like over a hundred up to like $200 on places like Tindy and Etsy. Sometimes they'll throw a battery on it. Sometimes they'll throw an antenna on it. Some, But either way, it's way too expensive from them. So for the fact that he's selling these for around $40 USD, it means that at least to me, he's got some integrity and I respect that. And it's nice. Everything on here is very honest. He says exactly what it does. Uh, what are our other pictures? Yeah, you can just see the back and it's all pretty standard stuff. There's no battery. There's no antenna. But again, 40 bucks, super fair. So let's hop back and see what else he's got to offer. So the next thing I wanna look at is the Ultimate Marauder for Flipper Zero. All right, here we go. So if you've seen me cover boards before, this guy may look kind of familiar. And that's because it's a very similar design to AWOC Dynamics Dual ESP Touch. Fun fact, that board's actually loosely based off of my Yeti board Mark III. That's right, this little abomination right here kind of started the Dual ESP revolution, if you wanna call it that. Now I'm gonna show you a direct side-by-side -side comparison between the Ultimate Marauder and AWOC's Dual ESP Touch in just a second. But I just wanted to show you the store we can scroll through and try to see some comparisons for now so first of all the price now his version of ultimate marauder comes in right around 170 dollars usd and awox comes in about 155 now keep in mind because he's in europe that actually may be kind of a wash when it comes to duties and shipping and stuff all right so let's scroll down and looking at the specs we can see it's spec'd out almost exactly like awox dual esp touch we've got the two esp 32s we've got a rover and a room the room is dedicated to managing the touch screen and the rovers for the flipper zero fun fact though even though it is technically an older board the esp 32 room does have Bluetooth, which is super useful because it is part of the Marauder firmware. It's it's super useful. Plus Ghost ESP, which we talked about a couple weeks ago, that has Bluetooth capabilities as well. So very, very useful to have an ESP32 room. If we scroll down further, we'll actually notice a bunch of other stuff. It says what Marauder does. I mean, we know what Marauder does. So if you don't, I've got like five videos on ESP32 Marauder. So check those out. 
And one of the nice things is, where do we go here? Do, 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 Easy firmware updates right down, whoop, right, right over here. So easy firmware updates means that you can use FZ Flasher to update it, which is phenomenally easier. Using a web flasher to flash your ESP32s instead of actual binary files and locations and addresses, so much easier. Definitely big feature. The ultimate flipper board does also include an internal antenna. Fun fact though, if we look at this, the picture on the back, that's the antenna, little ceramic guy right there, and it's technically external, really semantics, who cares, whatever, but it was just something I noticed. Now, here's one of the other things about the website is they don't actually have, I don't think, yeah, any pictures of the Ultimate Flipper without the case. So, of course, that means we're going to be taking ours apart. But before we do, let's take a step back and check out some other cool stuff on Flipper Hub. All right, so here we've got a lot of our usual suspects here. Um, we've got like a sub gigahertz board, so that's going to be a CC1101 board. We've got a ESP32 Wi-Fi board, you know, all the simple stuff. But what's cool, he's, he's got the BMO NRF too. So he made his own custom board for an NRF24, which if you don't know, NRF24 is used for things like mouse jacking. It's a 2.4 gigahertz chip. He's also got the ESP32 Rocket. So he's made his own PCBs, which I respect a lot. Look, it's not that hard to create a PCB that will plug into like a normal ESP32 you get from like Amazon and, you know, make it an interface for it. Designing your entire own PCB, adding silk screening, adding all that stuff. Honestly, if you're going through and putting the effort to do that stuff, I very much respect that. And then scrolling down, he's even got a mag spoof board. Now, look, Nobody would send me a mag spoof board. Nobody should send me a mag spoof board. Whether it works or not, I will probably not be able to get it to work. If you've seen any of my videos where I try to do mag spoofing, it has been a very elusive thing for me. I've tried two different boards. I've tried a ton of credit cards, a ton of readers. I have tried everything I can come up with and I still can't get it to work. In the future, if I do figure it out, I will absolutely show you guys. It's kind of like that white whale for me. I just, I want it to work so bad, but I've had nothing but failures with it. So one of these days, so if there's one last thing I wanted to point out about Flipper Hub is bum bum bum. If we click on here, go into the ultimate Marauder, we'll notice one thing. It's in stock. So that's kind of a big deal. A lot of the other creators, Just Call Me Coco, uh, Awok, even Rabbit Labs, it's hard for them to keep stuff in stock. So this is in open stock right now, at least as of the time of recording. People don't really understand how much work and how much logistics goes into building these boards. And even making a hundred of something, they can sell out in 10 minutes. And the amount of time and effort and money that goes into building these boards, trying to build 200, 300, 400, just so that they don't sell out in 20 minutes, it's very tricky sometimes. So again, the fact that Flipper Hub has got stuff in stock can't be understated. So now that we've gone through the shop, let's take a closer look at these boards in real life. But before we do, let's give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Delete Me. Now, if there's one thing I learned about the internet is that nothing is free. If you think it's free, what you're actually paying with is your data. Data brokers are literally everywhere and they're using your personal information as currency. You see, they buy and sell data and that puts your information all over the internet. Remember when you signed up for a free trial of something you completely didn't need? Well, guess what? You paid with your data and that data is now everywhere. But you're in luck. That's where Delete Me comes in. Delete Me takes all the legwork out. They scour every corner of the internet looking for your data. And when Delete Me finds your information on the internet, they will go ahead and ask those data brokers to remove your information from their database. I've been with Delete Me for about a year now, and my online footprint is so small now, I'm almost invisible. It has saved me countless hours of work and honestly couldn't be happier. So follow the link down below or go to joindeleteme.com slash Sasquatch or use code Sasquatch, that's S-A-S-Q-U-A-C-H, for 20% off. Thank you so much, Delete Me, for your continued support. You guys are awesome. Let's get back to it. All right, so here's my Flipper Hub mini haul. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the, the ESP Rocket V1. So let's pop this out of here. Ugh, that opened not gracefully. Get out of here. There we go. Eh. So here we have the ESP Rocket. As we talked about before, this is going to be an ESP32 room. It's hard to focus on. There we go. But it's a room. He's got the ESP hooked up to the external antenna right there, which is nice. Hey, I wonder if you could open a bottle with these. I bet you could probably once. Uh, USB-C, the only USB connector that actually works well anymore. So really nice to have that on there. Ugh, pull these off. And then let's take a look at the back, which just says flipperhub.de. So we've got, you know, nice little silk screening on there. It looks like a quality piece of hardware. Soldering looks good. 
yeah, everything on here looks good. We've got our boot and our reset buttons. Put that down for a second. Cute little, almost like an earbud package for the antenna. Super small guy, not a huge antenna. Not gonna get the most range in the world, but I have a feeling this isn't really what it's for. Knock into my microphone. Screw this in. Eh. So yeah, nice little form factor. If we take our Flipper Zero, unplug our, ugh, unplug the video game module, and then turn this on. Not that we really need to see the fact that it does work, but why not? Plug it in. Now, is this run 5 volt or 3v3? So you don't actually have to enable 5 volt through GPIO. If you just go into your scanning area, it will actually start the board right up right there, clearing APs, and there we go. Working as usual. Very cool. It works great. It's a good form factor, honestly. Uh, it's pretty small. I like the form factor. I like design. It's pretty cool. And again, it's just kind of fun. I'm on board for it. So let's unplug this. There we go. Throw this over here. And now we have our ultimate Marauder right here. So let's do the official screen pull. There we go. And take a closer look at it. So it's pretty good. It's 3D printed case. Um, couple little things, and I've done this before. These little dimples right there are because these screws are just a little bit too long. Not a big deal. I'm actually gonna be replacing both of those you screws sure in just a that? second. There is the GPS antenna right there. And then on the top is the SMA for an external GPS antenna. In my opinion, these are fine. There's nothing really wrong with these, but they are pretty weak. Where I'm from, I really struggle getting GPS satellites. So the smaller antennas, even the bigger ceramic ones don't really work super well for me. What I would typically do is I'll put a big antenna that would actually make this thing work. Other small nitpick, not a huge deal, but you can see the 3D prints a little rough on the top there. That's a first layer adhesion issue, possibly five degrees too low, something like that. Not a huge deal, not a deal breaker. It's just something that, you know, I notice. Now, of course, I have a case of my own we're going to be putting on. So when we take this guy off to take a look at it, this guy's going back on because, you know, that's how we roll. So flip it over. A couple other things to notice. We've got our, oh, a selector port up here. So I think we can switch the GPS between the two ESP32s to either the one that's running on the screen or the one that's running on the flipper. So that's kind of fun. Flip it right there. On top, just like uh, AWOX, we've got the two different color USB-Cs. One's going to control the ESP that's for the screen. One's going to control the ESP that's for the flipper. The reason why that's cool is because now you can actually install something like Ghost ESP to the screen and Marauder to the actual board and run two totally different things on there. Let's just go ahead and plug this directly directly and let's figure out how this guy works plugged in it plugs in pretty good so again this looks like another 5 volt board so if we go over here to gpio gpio 5 volt on here we go esp32 marauder by just call me coco let's make sure he's failed to initialize sd card because i didn't put an sd card in it gps module connected good so yeah it's running perfectly fine so let's see how this looks compared to our awok board you just scooch this over now awok has two different versions of it this is the squash edition but this is the first dual touch that he had and it's got a little bit bigger screen it's got the 2.8 i believe yeah, these are the same size screen. So this is more or less based off of this version, which is the earlier version. You can see it's got the same, it's hard to see, but the same two different color USB-Cs in there. Same idea. Uh, nothing on the top. So one interesting thing about these boards and that we ran into recently when we were working with Spooky is that you can't ugh, get the antenna out of the way. You can't really plug into this USB-C without removing the antenna. And if you want to be running serial off of that, that means that this antenna is not going to work. So that's a little bit of an annoyance, not a huge deal. So that's the one place where having the USBs on top actually does make life a bit easier. We'll put this, close this back up. And now the latest version of the dual touch right here, this guy, so this is the V2. This is actually, you'll notice a smaller screen comparatively. So it's got a much smaller screen compared to the other ones. I think it's a 2.3 is 2.8. Don't quote me on that. He downsized the screen because he didn't think he needed that much size. The case, you can see it's just a PEI case, but really good first layer adhesion. Again, he's been making a ton of these boards, a absolute ton. So he's got the print profile. He's got everything dialed in right there. No problem. What he did is he actually put an SMA hole in here, but he didn't put the pigtail tail in. So if you do want to put an external antenna on it, you just have to supply your own antenna and your own pigtail. Not a problem. I believe inside this guy, he's actually got the ceramic antenna, so you don't even see it. So if you want an external, you can add external, no problem, but it's got the internal and it's completely inside. So as promised, we're going to go ahead and take this guy apart and see what it looks like inside. So let's throw this over here, pop into the back. Now I've got my new LTT precision screwdriver. This guy's kind of interesting. 
I'm actually going to be covering this later on in a uh, holiday gift guide, comparing this guy to the iFixit Mako kit that I have. Pretty interesting stuff. But to take the screws out, uh, try not to shake my camera too much. Actually, let me just pick this up so I don't shake the camera and you can see a little bit better. So that's two screws. Hopefully this uh, antenna right there is not too hard to get out. All right. Yep. One cool thing about the screwdriver, though, is that it does have internal bit storage. So pop that in here, pop that in here. There we go. And fidget spinner top. Very fun. Let's take out this teeny tiny screw here. Hopefully, I know this is broken for somebody else, but I'm not going to break it, I don't think. Here we go. Screw is okay. Teeny, teeny, tiny screw. Try not to lose that. And let's see if it comes apart. Or do I have to take the antennas apart? No. Okay, cool. That goes through here. So SMA is coming off. Ugh. There you go. And, oh, that's right. I forgot there's silk screening on this. I totally forgot. This thing's actually really sick. Totally, totally spaced on that. Pop the front cover off. I'll probably get a PCB way clear case if this all works out well, because I forgot entirely. This thing's kind of sick. There we go. So, okay, interesting. So he's actually using the full board on there. Yeah, the full board even has right there. That is a full size SD card slot right there. That's part of this display. Very interesting. Is that unplugged? No, it is soldered to it because there's silk screening on this baseboard right here on the back on both sides. So unfortunately, I can't really see that. That's a little bit of a bummer, but no big deal. Uh, yeah, very, very cool silk screening. So yeah, we've got our two ESP32s. Here's our, that's the Rover right there. And that's the room. This is our micro SD card slot right there that we're actually using instead of the the full size SD card slot that's still on the screen. Pretty cool. Here's our uh, GPS antenna and all the other bits and bobs that make this thing work. It's it's very cool. And again, I completely forgot about all that really, really cool silk screening on here. I'd almost want to use it naked, but if I happen to have this board powered on and I drop something metal that shorted something in the back, more than likely that would smoke the board. It would let the magic smoke out. And then, you know, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. I'm going to move this over here. Let's see if we can pop this antenna out. Ugh, hope it's not glued on. Ouch, fingers. See if I can not break my lock picks. Ugh, there we go. We got it out. By the way, these are Jimmy Long starter sets. These are phenomenal lock picks. I absolutely love these things. So if they come into stock, grab a pair. They're really, really well priced. And these are also going to hit the holiday gift guide, I believe. All right. So pop this out of here and then it out of here. So let's see if we can pop this back into this guy, which is the back. Hopefully it fits a little bit of schmutz in there because it's pet G and pet G is schmutzy. And then just give it the old business. I'd say that's in. So I already put in two brass inserts. So those are heat set inserts. That's how this thing, whole thing screws together. I actually really like that. It makes it a lot easier to work on. Now it, I had already pulled out a couple screws to use for this. Where did I lose them off to? Where are they? Hello? I think we're gonna have to grab some more. I have a ton of these. Actually, AWOC hooked me up with these. These are like the perfect screws for pretty much everything. Flipper zero. You sure about that? There's two of those are all I need. So what we're gonna do here is, actually here's a fun little thing too. I've got the whole one hole clear, one hole that I didn't clear yet. People ask how I deal with cleaning these things out. And actually what I do is I take the bit or the driver and I use that to kind of clear the hole out. So let's go in there and kind of like one of these guys, give it the business. And that does a really nice job of clearing those holes out without having to worry about doing anything like drilling it. This isn't going to heat anything up. It's not going to melt anything. It's going to do a good enough job with what we're trying to do. So pretty easy. Get this guy out now and then we can put our screws through it. Yeah, there we go. So first thing we're going to this is the, always the hardest part for me. I'm going to plug the SMA in. I hate this part. Always so hard. Wow, that was really easy. <laughs> uh, for once, something goes right. Fantastic. So let's get this wire to cooperate. Here's the back. Back's on there nicely. Here's the front. Getting my smeary fingerprints all over it. But already, there we go. That's what we want to see. Get everything lined up, clipped together. Because the other one didn't actually clip together correctly. Screw this guy in. We got way fewer threads. Let's make sure we're nice and lined up and clipped together. So that there's only about five or six threads that are going to catch this, which is more than enough for this project. We're going to catch threads. Oh, did we not catch threads? Oh no, we're a little bit too short. Rut row. For the moment, looks like we're going to use the original ones. And just not screw them in too far. And hopefully that's not a problem. So, going back. Do this. Everybody likes to watch me do things multiple times. Right, guys? Cool, cool. Try these again and we just won't screw them in too far it's screwed there okay cool pop the brass inserts we're good there nice and snug gonna kind of feel this side as i screw it in okay 
I guess they're maybe they're not too long. They just got a little excited or maybe they pushed the heat sets too far. Yeah, that's probably what happened. They probably just pushed the heat set too far. That's an easy enough thing to do. I've done that a few times myself. All right, here we go. Here you in. Oh my God, already this thing looks so much cooler. Try to keep you in focus. I'm recording all of this on my new iPhone 16 Pro, which I got specifically to give you guys a better top-down camera that does have autofocus. So I'm trying to make this work as good as possible. Go, freeze these together. And then, yeah, that's in there nice and good. Now the top one. The top one's the one that's got me a little bit a little bit creeped out. So here goes nothing. It's a lot of threads. And this is Pet G. I already cleared this hole out. And I've already dropped the screw. Crap. One eternity later. There we go. I actually found the real screw. Look at how small that guy is. Small boy. Okay, cool. Gonna possibly shake the camera a little bit. That's fine. It is what it is because I really don't want to lose this again. And trying to do this while everything's floating in the air is really hard. So once we catch some threads, we should be in good shape. Here we go. Now we're good. Now we're cooking with gas. All right. And one of the things that's interesting about Pet G is that it gets softer if it's warm. So the faster you do this, the actually the easier it is. So this is actually going surprisingly well. I did not have high expectations for this screw going in without breaking it, especially with Pet G. So snug, snug, snug. Okay. Okay. Let me, are we not actually into anything? Is this, what's going on? Was there a heat set in the top part? No. There was a heat set in that top part. Son of a gun. What do you know? Not a big deal. We'll pretend it's good and I'll fix this and well, I'll fix it later. You don't need to watch me put a heat set in that I don't have. Yeah, I do like the clear case for this. This was an eight hour print between the front and the back, which is kind of wild, I know. But see if we can get the right reflection on it. It's really hard because this is actually a holographic plate as well. It's pretty cool. I love this plate. This is the same plate I used for like all of the stuff I brought to DEF CON, which is really cool. But yeah, see, that's a lot more fun. Gotta love the clear cases. But again, this was eight hours on transparent pet G. So yeah, it's not exactly quick. So this is the ultimate Marauder by Flipper Hub made by good old Billy Green. I think it's really cool. I like it a lot. But the one thing I did want to compare was the width of these. It's a different form factor and it's much wider than AWOC's version. So it's a little bit more cumbersome. Um, these are very large antennas. I could put smaller antennas on it and it would be a little bit less large. But if there's one thing that I kind of think is a detriment to this, it's just, you know, how wide stance it is. Again, nitpicking, I do like the USBs on top. They are pretty useful. But again, if I was going to say there's one downside I could pick from it, that would be the downside. So yeah, those are some of the offerings from Flipper Hub. If you've just been dying to get a dual ESP touch from AWOC and they've been out of stock, or if you live in Europe or on the other side of the world where it makes a lot more sense to have something shipped out from Germany than America, then Flipper Hub's your best bet. And again, they've also got a bunch of other cool gadgets, including a reasonably priced cheap yellow display, which again, not selling that at a huge premium, I always appreciate. Again, big thanks to Billy Green. You guys are awesome over at Flipper Hub. I really appreciate you. Are there any other board makers that you want to see me cover, leave a comment down below. As always, if you want to support the channel, support our sponsors. Go to joindeleteme.com slash Sasquatch or use code Sasquatch for 20% off. As always, you guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much for watching this video over every other video. We'll catch you next time.